Okay, now let's talk about the retina. So if you could see your retina, this is what it would look like. In fact, if you've ever been to the eye doctor and they put you in that machine uh, where they look at your eyes, this is basically what they're looking at, the inner surface of the eyeball, which again is the retina. Um, so the first thing uh, you may see in the surface of the retina is this area where it doesn't look like there's a lot of blood vessels and there may even be a kind of tiny dark dark spot at the center. Um, this dark spot is called the fovea and that area surrounding it that's kind of paler and does not have a lot of blood vessels is the macula. This effectively is the center of your uh, visual field. So in fact if you back up you can see in um, the cross section or the side view of the eye when light passes through the cornea and and through the center of the pupil um, and hits the back of the retina that fovea is the spot if you draw a straight line from the center of the pupil to the back of the retina that's where light hits so that's basically the center of your field of view so in other words if you're looking straight at something like if you're looking at you know let's say this letter F right here then the light from this patch of screen here would be hitting the fovea of your retina and then the macula is just the area surrounding that um, and it's not a coincidence that there are no blood vessels there because the blood vessels actually sit on top of the retina so the blood vessels if they were covering the macula or the fovea would actually block your field of view a little bit in the center of your visual field um, so that's why the blood vessels uh, are only really visible in the what's called the peripheral retina. So this is this is what, is what we call the central retina, and everything surrounding that would be the peripheral retina. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons why you actually have much better vision in the center of your visual field. Um, you probably just know this from experience. If you've ever tried to say read something, it's a lot easier to read a book or uh, text on a page if you're looking straight at it as opposed to say looking at it um, from an angle. Um, the other major feature you can see on the surface of the retina from this view is uh, this region over here called the optic disc and the optic disc uh, is actually two things happen in the optic disc. One is the, uh, the blood vessels that come in and feed the retina uh, come in uh, through the optic disc. But the other important feature of the optic disc is that there is, uh, this is the place where the optic nerve actually attaches to the retina. So all the axons that are going to go to the brain um, that come from the retina go in or leave the retina at this spot called the optic disc. And we call this spot the blind spot as well. The reason we call this the blind spot is that there are no photoreceptors in this region. So in other words, there are no cells in this whole little spot here that can detect light. Um, and so you are literally blind. So if light hits this part of the retina, um, you will not see it. And in fact, you will not, uh, whereas every other spot on the retina, um, you can see just fine. Um, now, you may wonder, why uh, if, there, if there is a patch of my retina where I'm literally blind I cannot see anything why don't I see like a little black spot in space um, in fact um, if if the if that were the case there would be a little black spot uh, in both of your eyes um, that would actually be just a little bit to the side of, of your the center of your visual field so for your right eye um, it would appear a little bit to the right of your uh, center of vision left eye it would appear a little bit to the left um, the reason you don't see that is because your brain actually kind of fills in the details of the uh, the, the blind spot um, uh, later on. So that doesn't happen in the retina, that happens in the brain. But it's it's one of the ways in which your brain sort of uh, fills in details uh, when they aren't available. So it's pretty easy to actually demonstrate the blind spot to yourself. Um, there's a picture like this in your book, but if you close one eye, it's easiest to do this. Um, I do it with my right eye. But if you, for example, close your right eye, Look at the little plus sign um, up there on your screen, and then you have to find the right distance. But if you put your uh, 
put your face just the right distance away from the screen, the little circle on the right hand side will disappear. Um, and what's happening is the, the image of that circle is hitting your blind spot at that position. Um, the uh, same thing happens if you look down at the bar down at the bottom. So again, if you kind of stare at the, the left hand side of the bar with your right eye, if you get to just the right spot, the little gap that you can see uh, if you look at it will disappear. In other words, uh, the space in where the gap was will be filled in with a black line, uh, which does not exist. So again, what, what's happening is your brain is sort of filling in the details that are missing uh, because the, the blind spot is there. So that's actually an important feature of all the sensory systems. So it's not just the visual system, but um, there are, uh, we, we make the, the analogy sometimes of the brain being a computer and the sensory systems being sort of recording systems, like your eye is basically a camera and your brain is just a hard drive recording all the data coming in from it. But that is not how the sensory systems work. Um, there's a lot of sensory information coming into all your senses at the same time. And uh, one of the jobs of your brain in your nervous system is to filter out the important stuff and to kind of get rid of the stuff that's not important and to uh, sort of fill in places where there may be missing information ambiguous information um, and usually things like this optical illusions um, or any kind of illusion um, you can have audio illusions for example they are they're a consequence of that the, the your brain sort of trying to fill in some missing information um, but that's an important feature, uh, important thing to note is that your sensory systems are not making uh, completely faithful recordings of what you see and hear and so on um, they are basically making what I would call uh, kind of an approximation of reality um, and uh, uh, that's what you end up being consciously aware of because the, the amount of information available to your senses at any given time is way more than what your brain can actually process so it just does the best it can. Okay so light comes in through the uh, the cornea followed by the lens and then it hits the retina um, but you don't want all the light to just hit the retina uh, from an object um, it has to be focused uh, on the retina meaning that if you're looking at a point in space uh, all of the light coming from that point needs to converge on a point on your retina but because of the way light travels uh, if light just came straight into your eye and hit your retina then uh, it would basically be just a blob of color or light uh, a blur essentially so the job of the cornea and the lens is to focus that light on the retina so the cornea uh, does most of the refraction necessary for focusing um, so when light comes in uh, it hits the cornea and because light travels a little, a little bit faster through air than it does through the tissue of the cornea which is mostly water um, it bends and because the cornea is uh, shaped the way it is because it's uh, concave uh, then all the light uh, that bends as it passes through through it will uh, converge on a point and hopefully that point is uh, corresponds to the surface of the retina which means that the point in space that those um, light waves came from will correspond to a point on the retina which will be what you would see um, so we call that distance the distance between basically the surface of the cornea and the place where those light rays converge the focal distance so the lens um, also contributes to focusing because it also refracts light like the cornea and it's also uh, convex like the cornea so as light after light passes through the cornea it bends again um, and that helps the uh, light rays from a point converge on a point at the retina the nice thing about the lens is that it has the ability to change to change shape so it can either be uh, stretched out and flat like this or it can be uh, thicker and fatter like that um, and that is uh, a property that's due to the flexibility of the lens tissue but also these little ciliary muscles which 
can pull on it and allow it to change shape. Um, and that's actually something that the brain can control, um, which is why you're able to change your focal distance at will. Because if the lens is stretched out like this, then it makes it so that the incoming light rays converge from a point that's further away. Whereas if it's thickened like this, it makes the light rays converge from a point that's closer up. Uh, because uh, the closer an object is, the light coming from it, the light uh, rays will uh, be coming in at a bigger angle, and so they'll have to be focused more. Um, now, if you have glasses or contacts, you probably have one of several vision disorders which are caused by abnormalities in either the shape of the cornea or the lens or the eyeball itself. If you have normal vision, the light coming into your eye, like I said, is refracted by the cornea and the lens, and then uh, the light converges onto a point on the retina. But if you have an eye where the your eyeball maybe is too long, or uh, again there is an abnormality with the lens or the cornea, then that convergence point, the focal distance may be slightly shorter than the eyeball itself, meaning that the light rays converge at a point just in front of the retina. That's called myopia. Um, it's also called nearsightedness because uh, if an object is closer to you, then it will be easier to focus because it does not require, or because the, the lens is able to correct for that, uh, that error. But if you have this issue where your eyeball is too short or the lens or the cornea causes light to converge at the back behind your eye, then you will end up with uh, this condition, which is also called farsightedness. Um, so objects close up uh, are hard to focus on, usually because one of the main causes of, of hyperopia is the lens becomes hardened or uh, thicker over time as you age. Uh, that's the reason why pe as people age they tend to need reading glasses for example. That's why I wear reading glasses. Um, and then astigmatism uh, is where multiple defects in the lens or the cornea cause multiple focal points to appear. And most of these are correctable with lenses so if you wear contact lenses or glasses they work by by changing the focal length so they either make it uh, further uh, away or closer to the retina depending on your problem um, and then in some cases you can have surgery in which the surface of the cornea or the ret or the lens is essentially uh, reshaped with a laser usually and uh, that can fix some of those problems. Um, now the visual field of the eye, uh, meaning the, the amount of space you can see, is due to the shape of the eye and the shape of the retina. Because of the uh, because the retina, the eye itself is essentially a sphere, and the retina essentially forms a big bowl or cup. You can see almost 180 degree 180 degrees in every direction, um, both horizontally and vertically. Uh, in fact, the only reason you really can't see 180 degrees horizontally is because of your nose. So if this is your right eye, your nose would be right about here. Um, now, of course, this is just for humans. Uh, an animal with eyes that were facing to the sides would actually have a greater field of view, um, 180 degrees or even more, because their eyes are uh, facing sideways, therefore they can almost see behind them. Um, in fact, this is uh, one of the reasons why some animals, uh, especially animals that have to worry about predators, tend to have eyes on the side of their head because they have a wider field of view. Um, also, the, the just the geometry of the retina and the way light passes through the pupil causes the image that hits the retina to be flipped around. So uh, if this is the right eye, Light coming from the right side of the visual field will hit the left side of that eye. Light coming from the left side of the visual field will hit the right side of this eye. And the same is true in the vertical direction. So light coming from above your eye will hit the bottom or the ventral side, and light coming from below the eye will hit the top uh, or the dorsal side um, of the retina. So uh, the image that hits your retina is upside down and backwards, but your brain has the ability to flip it around.
Um, uh, we usually talk about the ac visual acuity or basically the resolution of the eye in terms of degrees of visual angle. So if you have light coming from two points, meaning two sides of an object, uh, they're going to hit two points on the retina, but they're going to cross at some point uh, before they hit the retina. And the angle between those lines is the visual angle. Um, this is uh, a way to measure visual acuity because if you are look, talking about a large object like the moon, it forms a relatively small image on the retina because uh, it is so far away. So the actual size of the disk of the moon on, on the surface of your retina is less than 140 microns in diameter, but the visual angle, which is uh, is about 0.5 degrees, uh, that is true no matter how far along that line you measure. So next up we will talk about the cellular anatomy of the retina and the different layers.